on the internet throughout the year and here in Barnsley they've got a chance to see them and that's the line Barnes has picked and funnily enough that's the line he's going to stick with if he can help it well if it's successful for three frames then he'll hope it will be successful for uh, go on 10 you nearly 20, said it go 20, on 24 frames <laughs> <laughs> good work Palermo is in crowd like it they want to see a match here they don't want to see uh, Palermo in trouble and playing catch up 590 revs that's the average for Palermo at the moment and that well to me that shows Cass that I, I think he's just a bit revved up oh absolutely Simon I love that one <laughs> you must have been thinking about that one for ages just a few hours but yeah but uh, that time he hit the pocket and of course carry, with a rev rate like that he's going to carry all 10 pins Barnes looking good though at the start of the match this for a four bagger Yeah, here it goes. Well, he deserved that one. Just a touch of luck, but it's funnier. The, the more he practices, the luckier he gets. Well, that one actually got down a bit early on the lane, didn't it? Just came off his hand nice and early. Got into a very early roll and was slightly high on the head pin, leaving the 4 9 split and tripping them both. Oh, shut them down, didn't he? Makes four strikes in a row. And that's just a little bit of luck that you may need if you're going to uh, progress into the semi finals of this tournament. Palermo. Got to respond here, needs a double. He's got a double. Well, I think this is going to turn into the match that we always thought it was going to be. An absolute stunner of an encounter. But it always needed both the actors to play their parts to the full. And now Palermo's joined the show. It's game on. Not only is there a place in the uh, first semi-final for the winner of this match, the opposition will be either Jason Don Monte or Badra El Sheikh. And uh, it can't get much better, can it? There is nowhere to hide at the World Ten Pin Masters. And a 10 pin left by Barnes, just a, a touch light in the pocket. But uh, I think I ought to wash my mouth out with soap. You can't criticise Chris Barnes. You cannot criticise Chris Barnes. The man that uh, two years ago won two major tournaments in the United States before he came uh, to the UK to win the Masters and actually won $330,000 in 12 days, would you believe? <laughs> well, he, ca he came up with that lovely quote, didn't he? He said, it's amazing how loose your arm swings when you've just won 300 grand. <laughs> it's nice work if you can get it. Takes the spare away and uh, fine style. Yeah, yeah but he's got a, got a chance, hasn't he? He's got a chance. Got to take it though, needs the turkey, there's that spare. Chris Barnes sticks out like a sore thumb, doesn't it? But it's still great bowling. Oh, absolutely, yeah, again, Chris is getting about the ball down nice and early on the lane, getting it into an early roll. He's playing that oil line just around sort of 14-15 uh, ball and just sailing to the pocket. Really looking good. Palermo on a turkey, so that's great work from him. Three strikes in a row. Not quite matching the four of uh, Chris Barnes. will be looking to get straight back into that pocket. He's stuck with his rev rates, though. He's stuck with the ball speed. And he's just found the line that he's been searching for. Yeah, he made the pocket again, carried all ten. That's where he's playing. Look, we're about 19, 20 board. Right to the outside of the lane. Almost what we could call coast to coast. He's going deep, isn't he? Absolutely deep. Chris a lot straighter, just turns up nicely and he's back on 10. What a great shot that was in frame six. Oh, this is just a joy to commentate. This must be a joy to watch. Two great technicians, two of the world's very best. Well, this could be a world final in any any tournament, any bowling tournament. Two of the greatest players that uh, you will see on television. Barnes as consistent as ever. His uh, last three shots absolute identical speed and he carried two strikes unfortunately gives Palermo the chance to make it back working on three in a row no can't turn it into four and uh, once again problems with that line yeah just rode up a little bit high on the hairpin <laughs> again we saw that four nine split 
standing there for the right-hander. Manages to trip the four-pin out with the messenger. Yeah, just missed his mark slightly, and that's why the ball rode up high on the head pin. Needs to make the spare, and does. OK, still in it. The problem is, uh, we saw Barnes strike it off the card the other day. He always seems to finish strong. Well, the gap opens up. It's 21 pins to Barnes, and uh, a man like Chris won't let that sort of lead get away. He'll obviously want to in, uh, increase it. Takes himself a re-rack. He's locked down the lane. Wasn't quite happy with the pins on spot as they were, so he's allowed to take a re-rack. Uh, Bernie White's uh, on the case, just checking that everything's OK. How many re-racks allowed, Cass? Well, normally uh, in tournament it's two. I'm not quite sure what the situation is. Uh, Bernie's the boss down on the lane. Obviously, he's happy with the setup now. There's 10 pins standing in a triangle. And Chris Barnes is standing up for frame number seven with that 21 pin lead and working on a strike. There's a double. So a four bagger and a double. 25 strikes overall in this tournament so far for Chris Barnes. It's nice to see how he keeps this ball nice. It's pretty straight down the lane, is it? Whereas uh, Oscar's uh, beaming it left to right, coast to coast. Chris is very much down and in. Lots of rotation, keeps it nice and tight. He keeps himself out of trouble as well. That could have so easily been seven in a row. Still on for a nice five, seven, nine potential. The end of those two games, that's the important score. That's the one that'll take you through. Better pocket hit this time from Palermo, and there's so much mix on the pins from him. The carry's just tremendous. Oh, it's horrendous power, it really is. Left a 10-pin standing for a sort of a nanosecond before the messenger came across, but that wasn't needed because the 6-pin uh, took it out as well. Just watch this. There's the 6-pin and the messenger at the same time. It's a double whammy he's gone for. Makes himself a strike, frame seven. Well, he's certainly Closes feeling the, the heat. He's feeling the heat under these lights. You can tell Palermo is really psyched for this. And there's the strike rate so far for Palermo. Not quite up where he'd like it. And uh, his overall spare conversions as well. Just let me know that he's left two open frames. Not a problem, though, for Chris Barnes. He's been a lot tidier. Makes it a turkey. <laughs> so a four-bagger and a turkey so far in this opening game. Our uh, computer aided tracking system tells us that Chris has only had a two board spread over the eight shots that he's played, which means it's within an inch either way, every single shot almost in the same place. Also, that uh, Oscu has had a four board spread. He's had a couple of errant shots that have gone high through the head pin. Even so, he's had four strikes. Frame eight coming up. He's working on a single strike. We'll be looking for the double. Barnes has just hit the turkey. Double it is for Palermo. Well, he's shown flashes of brilliance, but really got tripped up by those two spares in the opening two frames of this game. And it's been catch-up ever since then, and he just hasn't got that run of strikes that he needs. He's got to be up in the five, six, sevens if he's going to compete with Barnes. The difference remains at 21 pins. As Chris stands out for the foundation frame. Here you can see the deep inside angle that uh, Oscar's shooting. Fourth arrow, out to second arrow and the tenth board, and back to the pocket. Real high swinging ball. Lots of power, lots of speed.